Welcome everyone to a casted game for Stormgate. And today spawning in the southwest corner of the map, playing in blue, we've got Naomi playing as the Infernal Host. And the opponent in the northeast playing in red, we've got Game Friend playing as the Celestial Armada. Welcome everyone to Lost Hope. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending of course where you are in the world. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. And today we're going to see some great action. Lost Hope is actually kind of a cool map, I've got to say. With the Celestial Armada being quite flexible in terms of whether they, you know, where they put their initial morph core, whether they go for a collection array, second collection array opening or not, we'll be seeing exactly what Game Friend will be up to. So early access is coming out very shortly for Stormgate. Super excited about it. In fact, what? Probably only about five or six days left remaining, and we're going to be in for some action coming in really soon. I'm, I'm pretty excited for all the game modes, 1v1s, co-op, you name it, it's going to be a hoot. We've seen a lot of uh, new videos from Frost Giant as well coming out with small mini reveals. In fact, the latest one has shown a um, new creep camp. So you see what we see here, the placeholder artwork, that's all changing. Going to be changing for early access. Now, we did see in this particular match the opening up with the Iron Vault. So expecting to see a bit of aggression and we see the Skull of Shedder coming out for the Hexen to get two little fiends to find out what he's up against. Now, it's going to be warding up here, game friend, dropping down that Bastion, possibly looking to get some Archants. And the Infernal Host has opted for a second base expansion. Something they typically do, actually, to be fair. They do love their economy in this scenario. And boy, oh boy, can they really start ramping up those unit numbers when the economy gets rocking and rolling. We'll see what ends up happening today. I'm kind of curious, right, because the Celestial Armada, they, I, guess, I feel like they struggle in this matchup at the moment, of course. Lots of things will be changing in um, early access. But they kind of have to rely on, on Argents, maybe, uh, maybe Vectors. The bigger problem is, is that, of course, the Spriggans is a really strong unit, specifically on this map for the Infernal Host. Great mobility, um, can be a bit tricky to get close enough to them as the Celestial Armada. They do have Vectors that possibly can try and keep up, but you're always going to be sort of uh, in a tricky situation there. He's going to go for the Morph Core on the right side. The Fiend will know about this, so Naomi will be aware of this space expansion. So possibly could target this area. Now, I would like to say, by the way, a very big thank you for everyone who's been supporting the channel, whether it be on Twitch or YouTube. You guys are absolutely legends, especially the YouTube channel members. We've got a couple of coming in already. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Big shout out, of course, to Sean Smith, who started it all off. And then also Brandon St. Jules coming in as well as a YouTube channel member. I appreciate you guys so much. I do actually have some special perks coming for you guys and the YouTube channel members when we get early access release. Nothing too major, mostly just PDF versions of my build orders that I will be releasing. And that will be primed and ready for you, especially if you play, obviously, the 1v1 competitive scene. It'll be pretty useful. I did the similar sort of thing for Age of Empires 4, and it's just a bit of a thank you for you guys for the extra support. But, you know, I'll be releasing a lot of build order guides, a lot of tutorials about Stormgate, especially the multiplayer. But... I'm pretty excited to see the campaign and the co-op as well, especially the co-op. Pretty cool commanders coming your way, I suspect. And uh, yeah, kind of excited to see where that's going to gonna go with this. I'll probably play a lot of the co-op to start off with and the multiplayer, to be fair. So we'll see. All right. Bit of pressure here on the west side. He does have three collection arrays now at this point. The fun, one that he started off with, the one on the right side, and now this one. It's being pressured a little bit by Naomi, but the arc ship deploying there means that, of course... The Infernals probably are going to be pushed away, for now at least. Game Friend just adds in another Bastion, so possibly going to see a lot more of these Argents on the field. They're a pretty cool unit, i got to say. A ranged unit as a, an early unit is quite cool. But um, it, it's a bit underwhelming at times in terms of damage output, i got to say. Like, you've got the energy that it's got. That does a lot more damage, of course. It enhances the attack, but once that goes, it's pretty underwhelming. So definitely need a large mass of them, and yet another Bastion gets deployed. He's going to get the creep camp for the Luminite. Passive trickling in. Be nice for that economy. We see a couple of Gaunts popping out now for Naomi. We did see a lot of Conclaves, by the way. So Gaunts could feature quite heavily. It's quite a cool unit for the Infernals, of course. The uh, attack does bounce a little bit. So if you do have your units clumped up against Gaunts, you've got to be a bit careful. And it's just going to back away for now. Well, kind of curious to see if there's going to be a play for the middle as well. There's a lot of Ethereum. I don't think I've seen that many games where it's got to that situation that, you know, both players are really challenged for the middle, but we'll see if happens today. Sovereign's Watch comes out as a top bar ability for the Celestials, trying to hold the fort a little bit. Wait, was that bugged? It felt like it wasn't even doing any damage there for a second or two. That was weird. Either way, Tier 2 comes out for Naomi. And a couple of Argents just 
harassing. There's not too much here in the way of defenses, although it does have defenders advantage near me, so a couple of gaunts just hanging out there. Not looking to take the fight just yet. As I say that, does look to take the fight now, and you can see that's such a kind of smart. I think Naomi, what, what Naomi did there was waited for the Argents to use the attacks to, you know, use up all their energy, and then it means that the attacks on the Gaunts are a lot weaker. Let's see another Morph Core, maybe go for another Collection Raid potentially, trying to get full position with that Arc Ship as a staging ground to attack from. So really good strength for the uh, the Celestial Armada, of course, being able to move that Arc Ship. Might lose a Morph Core, will lose a Morph Core. Pretty hefty. Because now, obviously, he has to train another one if he wants another Collection Raid. Does have a forward position power bank. It's quite nice to get, actually. It does replenish the energy. But of course, just one power bank compared to how many Argents there are. It will take a bit of time, for sure. A lot of Fiends coming out now for that first Collection Raid. does have a, uh, a turret there to help defend. But it's a little bit tricky. Both players kind of go for a sort of base trade situation. But definitely looking to be aggressive on both sides. Yeah, you can see quite a few Argents needed to take down these Gaunts. I'm just going to retreat down back to the Arc ship. Oh, going to move the collection away. Oh, he's going to lose it, actually. He will lose it at the end. That's a pretty big hit. It costs 350 Luminite, if I'm not mistaken, to replace that. So it's pretty heavy. Argents working on these zip workers, but they do see a little damage. He's going to go for the Shrine instead, it seems. Might just take it out, although... Yeah, that's a bit of a tricky situation, right? Because lost the opportunity to take out imp workers, try to go for the shrine. It's pretty low in health, but once it's still running, you know, it's doing its job ultimately, isn't it? So, right, going to take out a couple of gaunts now. Good attack, though, for Game Red, i got to say. Might take the shrine in the end. Yeah, I think he does. That's pretty huge. So that's going to be a lot of idle time for the mining. And don't forget, it's only two bases. Having said that, you know, Game Friend did lose one of his uh, collection arrays already. Pushing the imp workers away, and then we're having to retreat for now. Great game for Stormgate so far. Pretty excited to see how this one's going to turn out. Oh, another collection array now being pulled away. That is starting to become a problem. Wait, is he... What? Body blocking with a Skull of Shedder? Is that for... No, okay. I thought for a second that there was body blocking happening with a Skull of Shedder, but no, no, it wasn't. That'd be kind of crazy. But, yeah, either way. Naomi should be able to re-establish the situation here because there's a couple of shadow zones coming up, although... Arjun's pushing on in. Pelog's going to hold on for now. Mostly Gaunts. Mass Gaunts here for Naomi. Mass Argents for Game Friend. The Battle of the Ranged Units, it seems, today. And you know what? Speaking of which, I feel like the Infernals actually possibly have the best ranged unit in the game. The Hellborn. They're pretty expensive. Oh, look, there we go. There's one. <laughs> Speak of it. If you can get a mass of them, it can be really difficult to deal with. These Argents won't stand a chance. It's a very... Um, the thing about the range units for the Celestial Armada comes so early in their tech tree that it becomes obsolete pretty quickly, right? I think sort of almost 10 minutes to the game, Argents feel really difficult to scale. It doesn't really feel like a unit that scales particularly well. You know, you've got the Lancers for the Vanguard. You could even see Lancers in the late game, to be fair, with the, you know, kinetic redirection. As an upgrade, the Argents, maybe not so much. Although, I don't know, maybe there'll be some upgrades coming in for them. That could make them a little bit more durable into the mid to late game in early access. I feel like the Celestial Armadas, you know, being the third faction to be revealed, probably is the faction that will change the most. You know, you've got Vanguard that's been there from the beginning. They've had a lot of iterations, a lot of changes. Infernals, similar sort of thing as well. But the Celestials, the new faction on the block. Kind of excited to see what direction the developers will go with this faction. I mean, in terms of, you know, the nuanced things. Obviously, we already know that they don't have the population supply kind of mechanism. They've got the power instead. And they've got sort of a nomadic kind of being able to move buildings each and every direction they want. It's a pretty cool style, i got to say. Certainly is uh, very different from the other two factions. And I think Game Room might lose this collection array, actually. It's pretty disastrous. Because I think, if I'm not mistaken, Game Friend only has one other collection array operating at the moment. There it is does lose that one in the end so down to one collection array. i think another morph core is going to that secondary natural base expansion location so yeah maybe it's now down to two collection arrays which is um not very much at all i gotta say it means it's been a great game right a lot of aggression on both sides both suffering some losses it does feel like the infernals cope better with that actually because they do have a top bar ability called hellspawn resurgence they can reset the charges on their buildings and really ramp up production with, you know, the shrines or even the production buildings, of course. Summer's Effigy gets deployed for the Infernals, a top bar ability that allows the White Health to be regenerated. Does snipe out one of the Hellborns and the second as well. That's going to start focusing on the Gaunts now. I think, I think, I think Game Friend wins this fight, to be fair. 
if I'm not mistaken. But the Gaunts are going to make a decent trade after all. Fighting underneath the Arc ship, not ideal for Naomi. And we're going to back away. Overall, not too disastrous. You know, whittle down the numbers of Argents after all. And I'm sure Naomi all coming with a second wave on the right side. A bit optimistic. Not too many Gaunts there. Arc ship deploys once again. But yeah, just constantly harassing, poking and prodding here, Naomi. And uh, a lot of these Argents are pretty low in health, I've got to say. All right, Fiend's going on the right side. And, and I did actually drop a poll in the community tab for my YouTube channel about which faction people are looking to play. The kind of crazy thing is, is that it actually ended up really equally split. Like, literally, I mean, I'm not even exaggerating. It's 33%, 33%, 34%, something like that. And uh, that's bonkers, right? People are actually really making it even, which is amazing to think about. Like, it means that you're not going to hopefully have too many mirror matches or... Even if you do, well, you probably won't have that many. But either way, there's going to be a lot of variations. So it's not going to have sort of everyone playing one faction, hopefully. It was a pretty decent size of the sample as well. Almost about 750 people, I think, responded to it. Yeah, there we go. Gaunts versus Yargents once again. Very bright area of the map, right, with the enrichment on the Ethereum. It's going to go for multiple base expansions. Now, this is actually something that the Infernals do really well. They do have mass expansions like this, especially with Hellspawn Resurgence, resetting the charges. They pump out workers like no other. It's a bit more tricky for Game Friend because the issue is that Game Friend has to make morph cores from the Ark ship and then make the collection arrays. So you can only, you know, keep the Ark ship active for as long as you can. It just takes a bit of time. But speaking of morph cores, there, there is another heading northwards. Only two collection arrays up against, what, is that four shrines now? I think, obviously, not all the shrines are already fully made just yet, but they will be. Just a matter of time and maybe using the fiends just to check where these collection arrays might be popping up. All right, so there's the uh, third collection array. So three collection arrays. It's going to be expanded to a fourth one potentially. Or maybe going for a fabricator. If that's what it's called. I think it's what it's called, yeah, for the uh, Ethereum. It does deploy. There we go. Well, that's a bit of an awkward position for it, isn't it? Uh, I guess it's equidistant between the two Ethereum nodes. Anyway, going for the speed camp here. Here's Game Friend and the Celestials. Now, I've got to say, we don't see that many prisms. I feel like... Yeah, I mean, it's a bit of awkward. I didn't see a lot of Celestial Armada players focusing on prisms too much, but I think it does add quite a bit to the economy. So surprised not to have seen that a little bit earlier. And he's now dropping down a mainframe. Maybe it's for some... Uh, for some Kree. We'll have to see. That was rhyming, intentionally. But yeah, Naomi just... Constantly keeping a track on where the collection arrays might be. Naomi feels pretty well in control of this game, knowing that uh, must be ahead in the economy, right? Only one worker on this one, but I'm sure that'll scale very quickly. that would be hard to break through, right? That's a lot of shroud stones to get through if they wants to try and challenge that position. That's going to be so annoying, right? Just one fiend being so irritating. Going to force... Um, Game friend into dealing with that. Maybe sending Argents. Maybe using the top bar ability, Sovereign's Watch, which uses the energy, of course. Which ideally would be spent other times rather than on one fiend. But the best thing about that for Naomi, keeping up pressure like that, small details like that, is going to be useful. Like, it's just going to mean that Game friend won't want to push out with the army. And that means Naomi can really boom up on that economy with as many shrines as possible. Man, the music is so good for the Slash Armada, i got to say. I think when that update released from Stormgate, it was absolutely phenomenal with the music. Kind of excited to see if they're going to get some more as well, right? Because it's just one main soundtrack, but usually factions have one or two variations or a couple of soundtracks for them, of course. And I'm kind of curious to see what the next ones will be like. Of course... Whilst the game is looking pretty polished as it is, it's going to be early access, so we can expect a lot of updates and changes as well from there. Which is going to be pretty cool. I love the fact that we've been able to grow as a community alongside the development of the game. I know it's been a bit ropey, but if, you, if you've seen some of the um, the new Frost Giant trailers for early access, you see the graphics have definitely improved. I mean, the art style will obviously stay the same. That's just obviously fixed. But it makes a big difference. You know, things like shading, textures... I feel like a lot of, I mean, it depends on who you're asking, but a lot of the comment section I read, it's 
it's not always taken with the pinch of the salt, the fact that it's still in development, right? Lots of things will change. They've clearly been focusing on the gameplay aspect of things, and that feel, it feels like they've, you know, they've been getting it right. And it's going to be continuously improving anyway. But, uh, you know, the graphics or the terrain and stuff like that, it's been usually the, I wouldn't say lowest priority, but, you know, they've clearly not focused on it as much as the other things. And that's okay. You've got to have priorities at the end of the day. And they have said in a lot of the interviews that they focused and prioritized the gameplay aspects, right? Because that's once once that gets fixed, it's hard to, not so much change, but it's a case of why would you put work into the train if you're still fixing things around a little bit? Those are sort of the after touches, which people are really focusing on, which to be fair is understandable. It's the first thing you see. Um, but I, for one, I'm pretty excited to see how that will continue to grow and develop as time wears on. About to see the engagement here. Argents with Kree added in. Quite a lot of Kree as well, actually, by the way. Top Arbiter comes out for the Infernals. Couple of Skull Shadows going to infest the enemy units. Now the Kree getting on top of the Gaunts there, trying to get on top of them with the explosions. Manages that for a little while, but a lot of the Kree have gone down, by the way. But having said that, so have a lot of the Gaunts. Summon Effigy comes out as a top bar ability for the Infernals to try and replenish the White Health Bar. It's doing a bit of work, but it goes down. And those Argents really starting to take over. Those Gaunt numbers looking a bit dicey, but bear one thing in mind. I'm pretty certain that the Infernals have a better economy. So as long as Naomi survives this oncoming push, won't be down and out just yet. Argus though pushing on forward, not a lot of energy on them, so the damage to output they're doing is not great, but they've just got so many of them. Gaunt's being sent to the slaughter, couple of Hellborns are going down now. This is a bit of a tricky situation for Naomi, another summon effigy top bar ability to try and let these units survive for as long as possible. So defenders advantage coming into play, couple of Kree coming in, rolling in from the north, getting on top of the Gaunt's and the numbers of units is a little bit disastrous here for Naomi. Has walled up, so that'll buy some time. But of course, the question is, would it be enough time? Conclave, Hellspawn Resurgence gets deployed on it, gets the charges of the Gaunts, they pop out, and yeah, these Argents are going down. I mean, they're just so low on energy. They're low on health at this point as well. Fiend chomping at the bit, Brute coming forward, and yet yeah, the defender's advantage will hold for Naomi. Massive hold with these Gaunts. The Hellspawn Resurgence really made a big difference in that particular situation. The Argents all go down now. All of a sudden, maybe it's Naomi's chance to push on forward. What a crazy game. A mass, bit of a mass slaughter there on the uh, imp workers. It's a lot of dead bodies, I'm afraid. Looks like... Uh, Going to redistribute the imp workers back onto it. And well, where do we go from here? It's a bit of a head bashing on both sides. A lot of aggression, of course. It has been a cracking game, i got to say. But overall, the bigger picture, we can see it. The players obviously can't is Naomi has got a crazy economy behind this way. Absolutely insane economy. Lots of imp workers, lots of shrines now on the south side of the map. Doesn't really feel like Gamefriend has that economy scaled up well. Like, I'm not so sure how many prisms Gamefriend has. Doesn't really feel like the Celestial Martyrs have been prioritizing that. And uh, there's only so much damage that they can do to keep up, and ultimately the economy just does start to uh, get a bit out of hand, right? Because after a while, having the better economy means that Naomi can just take suboptimal trades and still be in a good spot. Off court, trying to go on the right side, but Naomi keeping on it with fiends, and that's part of the problem as well, right? The uh, Celestials just haven't been able to get a sneaky base and keep it operational without Naomi spotting it. You know, partly because of Naomi's scouting information from the fiends, doing it really well. Starting to deploy those mines, which can be so, so tricky to deal with. We're going to see some Spriggans, maybe. There's a Twilight Spire. So quite possibly you're going to be seeing some Spriggans, which would be hard here for Gamefriend to deal with. Because, you know, added in Kree, the Kree doesn't have any anti-air capabilities, and the Argents typically don't scale well into the mid to late game. And I think, obviously, this playtest, the Frigate playtest, this is where things become a little bit challenging for the Celestial Armada in a particular matchup, right? Summon Effigy comes out. Because the Spriggans, what can you do against them? You could potentially go for more Argents, but they just don't scale well to mid to late game. Maybe Vectors can do a job. Possibly nothing really can keep up with the Spriggans. And the uh, the Scythe is just not really that great. A unit I feel for the Celestial Armada. I wouldn't be surprised to see if that gets changed in a big way. It's a, it's a bit of a weird unit. Very low damage output, but it has a, like an activatable shield that makes it super, super tanky. But other than that, 
It feels like a really weird unit, I gotta say. I can imagine it being upgraded or changed or something. Maybe the damage output increased, so we'll just have to see, of course. Not long to go, to be fair. I'm pretty excited for it. But yeah, I feel like at the stage, yeah, there we go. There are these brigands. Gonna be hard to deal with. Plenty of those Hexans might deploy Miasma as well. Got the mines and Kree gonna jump on top of that. Take the fight. And we'll clear a lot of these infernal units, to be fair. But here come the Spriggans from the northeast. If they take out the Argents and the Kree kind of exposed, deploying on the mines. And the crazy thing is that Infest could play a role here. That's for sure. But again, I feel like Naomi taking a suboptimal trade, and that's okay. Having said that, actually, the Argents are going down. It means the Spriggans have free reign on the Kree. Kree are very low on health and... Yeah, I mean, I'm not so sure about this from Game Friend. Losing a lot of the Kree and a lot of the units. And uh, to be fair, it's taking out a couple of Hellborns and whatnot. But uh, it's looking a bit tricky because, of course, it feels like at this point, Game Friend actually has to do a lot of damage, right? Very behind on economy. That's a lot of Spriggans that are going to be... Well, I mean, at this point, Game Friend doesn't actually have anything against those Spriggans. Not an Argent in sight. Does have the towers, to be fair. But a bit of a tower defense going on. For the Celestials and the Spriggan's going to get on top of this and I'm not so sure if the Spriggan's take that fight actually. Probably no need to rush into it as the army is in hot pursuit. Or following behind at least. But yeah, been a cracking game. Here come some of the Vectors. Maybe these guys will have a bit better uh, deal with uh, the Spriggan's than the Argents have. A bit tricky, right? Guardian Nexus being deployed. Will we see some Animancers? It feels like, actually, to be fair, we talked about how it's difficult for the Celestials, but Animancers could be a really good response. Animancers have this ability that can do a heck of a lot of damage. I am speaking, of course, about the Dark Prophecy ability for the Animancers. I'm sure we all see it today. And it might do a lot of damage for Naomi. Starting to group together. That is a lot of Spriggans. Holy moly. And that's what the economy is all paying for. Can we have to go for a double-pronged attack, potentially? Some from the air, some from the ground. Going towards the collection arrays, and it's just so hard, right, on this map. Mobility really works well for you. Yeah, and I think the uh, the, the Spriggans just take down the tower and then the collection array. There's nothing that the Celestials can do about this. Above maybe move units there, but it's going to be tricky, right? It's going to be tough to keep units on every corner of the map, which, of course, the Spriggans can fly over to very quickly. Yeah, the mobility on this map is really important. There are just so many cliffs, so many narrow kind of areas to kind of traverse. Very tricky for units to go and um, you know, get through to key areas of the map. Air units probably really important on this map. Which of course the Celestials don't really have a great one of. Does have a couple of sabers for the ground units. Going to have one Animancer. Going to use the Dark Prophecy potential on the Spriggans. Spriggans, if they're smart, target the Animancer. That's exactly what happens. Without Animancers, the Spriggans are going to be really tough to deal with. And yeah, this is going to be a cleanup. I mean, Naomi just taking this fight massively and winning it. Huge. And the macro now starting to feed into the game. Moving to the northeast. And that's a lot of units coming out for Naomi. Game friend. Back up against the ropes. Feels a bit tricky. Feels a bit difficult to see a way back unless there's some big, big Animancer shots. Now, we have seen those before. So maybe I am being a bit pessimistic. Maybe there can be a way back into the game for the Celestials. But whatever they're going to do, they're going to do it fast because they're going to lose more economy. And, well, that's probably really not what they can afford right now. If loses another collection array, Sprigger numbers really start to mass up. Tarot's going to be worked on. and Yeah, it looks like Naomi in full control of the game. It's been a great one so far. And all that comes down to now is possibly one big fight. Game Friend has a lot of production, but not much in the way of economy to make an army, I imagine. Definitely not an army to match that from the Infernal Host. It's pretty crazy. Saturated most of the Luminite nodes and getting the tower defenses just to be safe and sure. The Shroud Stones, of course. Yeah, it's going to be moving back on home. Looking to group together for one coordinated push, one coordinated fight potentially. A bit of aggression coming in for the Celestials. And whilst there's not much of an army there, there are four Animancers. That could be a comeback mechanic. It's going to be rough, but if the Animancers can do some big damage with Dark Prophecy, maybe, maybe, maybe there's a way back. We'll have to see. Maybe Kree as a frontline, and with the Animancers behind them, could do a lot of work. But you're going to have to land, right? The problem is with the Animancers and the Dark Prophecy, the increasing damage is when really the enemy stays on the, uh, the affected area. There it is. Look, it's going right on top of the Brutes. That will kill a lot of the Brutes. 
But using the Dark Prophecy there now means that maybe the Animancers won't be able to use the Dark Prophecy on the Spriggans. Speaking of which, there they are. They're moving out, looking to take the fight potentially here. Game Friend has a hard hold. Animancers has got to deploy the Dark Prophecy if they can. Does deploy them on the Spriggans, but I'm not so sure it's enough. There's just way too many of them. A lot of the Gaunts have gone down, but those Spriggans are being such a menace and... There aren't that many Argents remaining. Saber's about to go down. Animancer's nowhere to be found anymore. Down they go, and there it is. Then when GG surely gets called. Hope you guys enjoyed this cast of game for Stormgate. If you did, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Take care, and see you next time.